What is going on, my friends? Welcome to another installment of Beyond the Podcast. If you guys would like to support Beyond the Podcast, you can do so by using my Amazon link, amazonbrian.com. Before you visit Amazon to make any purchase, a small, small portion of your purchase is used for hosting and equipment fees and whatnot, and it costs you nothing. But moving on, I have a very special guest, someone who's doing their first podcast. Ooh, what's going on, guys? How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. This setup is sick. Isn't I like this fire? a lot. I thought it'd be weird hearing yourself in the podcast. Isn't but it's it just cool. like really empowering? Yeah, it's cool. Like you're just like, my voice is booming uh-huh, now. Uh-huh. Like, let's record a movie. <laughs> right? <laughs> so the topic that we wanted to talk about today is like a very buzzword topic. Everybody's been asking for it. Like tons of comments and messages asking about this because it's a very weird, interesting new thing. It's the whole topic of super meat. Mm-hmm, Do you mm-hmm. want to explain it? Well, I haven't looked into it that much yet, but my understanding is they're essentially taking stem cells or some sort of cell Mm -hmm. uh, from the animals that we're typically eating and growing them in a lab. So they're making it's real meat. It's not a fake meat. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's it's not some like alternative meat. It's meat. Yeah. But without the killing, which is really cool. So Petri dish style meat. Oh, yeah. Not soy replacement meat. Exactly. Or something like that. Real, not, real meat. not that I have anything against Gardein. You know what I'm saying? Woo! Tastes pretty good. It's fire, bro. So like uh, one of the big things about this is like when you cut into the meat, when you chew into the meat or whatever, like it's still going to have the same properties. It's still going to have like blood coming out of it and whatnot. It's just that that blood was not circulating inside of an animal. So the, the jury is so out, like there have been a lot of channels who put out their video and, you know, some are like, yeah, it's, it seems really sick. You know, Dr. McDougal, McDougal, Mm -hmm. he made a, he made a video and he was like, did he? It's super awesome. It's about to come out really like promoting it and stuff. And then other ones I've heard people be like, it's really gross. It's still really weird. Mm -hmm. Well, I know for myself personally, I would still find it gross to eat, but Mm -hmm. I definitely see its value in bringing people into veganism and getting them away from the cruelty associated with all the meat that we eat right now. Because right now there is no option that's not, I mean, you kill a living animal right now. Absolutely. So, yeah, you yeah. can't get around that. Yeah, it's cool. It's like um, it's like you're not really you're not vegan, but you are agreeing with the cruelty aspect, and you want to help with the cruelty. Mm-hmm. But you don't want to give up all your and your steak and your bacon and bacon, right? Oh, <laughs> that bacon! Oh God, I can't go that vegan. Bacon, though. bacon. So like, you'd be able to get your bacon and without mm-hmm. feeling terrible and like having to watch those pita videos and being like, "Fuck, dude, chainsaws and shit." It's really interesting too, because I could see it ultimately being a more sustainable thing. Because you don't have these giant farms oh, yeah. taking up all this space using all these resources, using the grain and yep. stuff, all the stuff that they feed the, the cows. You don't need that. You just have a little lab, and mm-hmm. obviously it's still going to take up space, but when you scale it down to that level, it's just a crazy potential just environmental factor yeah. that we can that we can you know do something about which is pretty cool totally and that's one of their like talking points too and like especially in that one video they have like whatever actor that is actress she's like super famous but that's like their their main video that's circulating everywhere is they're oh, like yeah, yeah they're like it takes i don't remember the number but you know something like 15 or 20 times less resources to make yeah, the same pound yeah. of meat through this petri process mm-hmm. because you get to avoid the whole growing thing oh and like the meat it comes to like fruition or whatever you can harvest it like in one third of the time instead of having it to be a whole cow or whatever. That's very cool. And I'm sure it's not right now, but I, I wonder if in the future it actually become cheaper because mm. you're not spending money on all that stuff to feed the animals, yeah. you know? Yeah, you're like, right. Like obviously the lab equipment and stuff is there, but I would assume that's kind of one of those things where the initial investment's huge. Yeah. But then after that, it's it's very low cost. Good point. Yeah, it's probably it's probably like all these vegan brands that are coming out right now. Like mm-hmm. everyone's like, oh, dude, Guardian's like $5 a pack. And I bet you as the demand goes up, then they're going to be able to increase scale and then drop the price. So yeah, probably the same thing. Like how if you want to go buy like grass-fed or organic beef, it's way more expensive. It would be like you would go to the store and you'd see the same packet of meat right next to a packet of meat, but this one would say like Petri or whatever, like lab lab grown meat. Yeah. And super would, meat. Yeah, super meat, I guess. Yeah, yeah. And then you would pay that premium though, probably because it's mm-hmm. like healthier and like better and stuff. So you're like having to bite the price. Do you think though the average person will actually consume it? Because I could just see all these people going, Oh, that's gross. Like I'm out right off the bat. Yep. yep. How do you think we're gonna get around that? I don't know. Well, like just like with the organic or the grass fed or the cage free mm-hmm. thing, they're like, oh, it's more expensive. I ain't going to pay $3 for 12 eggs when I could get it for a dollar, dollar right. fifty. I could even see it just being an issue, though, that they think it's weird that it was grown in a lab. Yeah. And they're not eating the food from the cow, even like, though obviously, you know, 
between us, like we could say, obviously eating the cow meat is pretty crazy. What do you think about it? Like yeah. when you compare that to lab meat, is it, is it that crazy? Yeah, like is it unnatural or yeah, is it unnatural? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, true. I, I bet you there's going to be a, a huge like group of people who are just not going to be down with it. Then there's going to be like the transitionary type people. Then there's going to mm-hmm. be the vegan people who are fighting for it. So there's going to be like different tiers of people who are against him for it. But I don't, I, I don't know. Like I really couldn't predict whether or not it's going to become like a super viable thing, mm-hmm. at least in the beginning. It would obviously it would be cool if it did. I th- I think it's going to be years still before you like just see it as an option. Yeah. In the grocery store. I see the profitability being way higher though, so I could see yeah, corporations very true. really very jumping true. on it. What what do you think though? Like personally taking everything out, <laughs> if if you could go to your grocery store that you're about to go to on a daily basis or whatever weekly basis, would you pick it up? Would you try it? Would you eat it? Would you try it and would you continue to eat it? Right. Okay. So for me personally, as a newer vegan that did things for very emotional and ethical reasons, I don't think that I could eat it just because meat in general grosses me out. And the the whole thing with it is it's still meat. Mm -hmm. So personally, I I do definitely still find that gross because of what I see it as. But I definitely try it just to prove a point because I still have friends and family that no, I know what meat tasted like. And if, if they saw me try it and I could tell them, hey, you know, this is or isn't exactly what we had before, I would definitely do it for the sake of that. But I could not see myself ever, ever consuming it on a long-term basis personally. Mm-hmm. It's not really something I think most vegans would really be interested yeah. in personally. Yeah. Just as a t- tool. What about you? It seems, it, yeah, I, f- I feel like you're right. Like, it seems like most people who have been vegan for a while just get out of the taste of animals and then mm-hmm. it just purely becomes ethical because they're like not worried about like, oh, I'm losing that taste. It's just like, why would I eat that when I can go eat that? And it's Absolutely. still filling and it feels great and I like the taste of it. Personally, I would probably test it yeah mm-hmm. yeah so i would test yeah, it probably because like you know people want to see it they want to hear about it and mm-hmm. obviously we have platforms to do so um, very true as long as it was fully cruelty free yeah, uh, we'll, we'll get that's to this. rough yeah let's get to this in a second <laughs> uh would i would i continue to use it if i like did try it the first time and i was like wow that was exactly what ground beef or steak or bacon or whatever the fuck tasted like or chicken or whatever probably not mm-hmm. because honestly i mean you've seen it like I don't have even like a second thought when I make food. I'm just like, oh, dude, you boom, 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 boom. And I just start cooking. Well, it- and the thing is too, like the replacements truly are so tasty for people that have already made the conscious effort to mm-hmm. give up meat. It's really not a big deal to just continue not having meat. Like true. I, I really feel like having that option there would be cool, but not really like something that, that pulled people back into yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Like maybe, maybe what I would, maybe do i really don't know because that's like so speculative and conceptual it's Mm -hmm. not even there yet so i haven't really thought about it full on we're kind of just blabbering through it but like maybe i would use it like for an every once in a while thing like maybe Mm -hmm. if i was craving which i never do which is awesome but like if i was craving that thing that i have not had in a long time like carne asada or a burger or something or maybe people could use it who uh you know like your family's vegan but you're gonna go hang out with your girlfriend's family at the big potluck Mm -hmm. and so you don't want to interrupt anybody but you also would like to not contribute to cruelty stuff so you're like can you guys pick up the lab stuff instead yeah that's a really good point that would be awesome for that and i could see it uh as a really good tool for people that have maybe went vegan but are still really experiencing those cravings and if it was something that would keep them into it fully without making it like a task or you know potentially driving them away from it in the future if they just tried to go all out it would be a really good way to do that without harming animals that was a damn good point that was a damn good point because i've had a lot of people who say they've gone vegan and then they just couldn't Mm -hmm. they just could not they've gone back and this would give them that perfect like you know that Mm -hmm. perfect balance i guess between the two now talking about cruelty the the concept is cruelty free but the apple the application of it currently it seems to be kind of on the fence i saw i don't know if you were watching the happy healthy vegan video with me maybe mm, no i didn't see it. i know uh, i think you were editing behind me yeah yeah You're yeah busy. like i i heard it in the background so they're basically just doing the same thing we're doing you know discussing their opinions and blah 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 and stuff and so they did some research research on it about the actual process of you know taking the initial embryo cell or stem cell or whatever you know, like sample from the animal and apparently 
the concept is like really harping on the fact that it's like harmless and stuff, but Happy Healthy Vegan is saying that the extraction process is currently not harmless. It's currently mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. on a live animal. It, it definitely hurts the animal. I believe like the animal half the time gets like killed or whatever. So like currently it's, it's not at that point. So how does that make you feel about it personally? It's well, it, it, yeah, good point. It's weird, dude. Cause like, you know, I want to be like an advocate. I want to be like, yeah, this is mm-hmm. cool. This is going to be a great thing for people who are not wanting to ever go vegan, but you, you know, you kind of want to do what we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. But then like, I don't want to, I don't want to make a video that's like, try super meat when it comes out because I know that it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand that personally. I'm a little bit more prone to actually supporting it mm-hmm. just because it's one of those situations where there really is no other option. option. So it's just the case of doing the least harm that you possibly can and Mm -hmm. it's significantly less like when you talk about the numbers of the animals that are killed every single day and you're trying to do that to to ultimately grossly scale back on that you know yeah there is there is harm to animals in the beginning but like the ultimate greater good is so significant in my opinion um i would definitely be more prone to supporting it that's a damn good point i mean like the reality does stink, but there just aren't any other options. You yeah. Know? Like you have to be the mature enough thought person that you go from, you know, your individual thought to the broader perspective. And you be like basically how generals and stuff can take casualties if it wins the war in general. Because mm-hmm. then not everybody dies, at least just 15,000 people die. Right. So it's a smaller percentage. And the other thing is too, if they're going to progress to not harming animals at all, that's going to take a lot of research, a lot of development, a lot of money. Funding. So... You got to support it right off the bat, True. I'm assuming, right? Where else are they going to get that money from? True. Now, that GoFundMe did do pretty good or Dude. whatever funding site they it used. It looked insane. Pretty cool, yeah. Well, th- then there's this thought too. If they initially, which sucks, hurt a bunch of animals, cut them open, vivisection style, pull out the meat, put it in a Petri dish, start growing the Petri dish meat. Theoretically, couldn't they take the Petri dish meat and use that right. to produce new cells? So like the first start of the company would be mm-hmm. based on cruelty but then from that point on they could just use the imitation yeah, meat yeah, to yeah. continue mi- the, right yeah yeah i don't really know where they're planning on on going with that but it would be so sweet and it makes sense to me that it would ultimately be cheaper and just better all around economically like the yes. more sensible choice where you know 200 years down the road people are like oh my gosh they used to raise cows yeah. in these pastures for me and now we just have this tiny little lab and we produce this many thousands of pounds of meat, you know, every single day. True. Yeah. Yeah. Like, that's an interesting way to think about it. Like in a mm-hmm. hundred years, what's this topic going to be? It's not going to be a new oh, yeah. topic. It could yeah. be like a fully, the entire society or world uses the style of meat. Cause like, yeah. How cool would that be if, if, uh, what is, I don't know how much acreage it is to, to <sighs> raise one cow, but yeah, like all that stuff and all that runoff too. That's one of the big things is like all that soil waste and water stuff goes into our water lines. <laughs> and then all these people have these terrible diseases. And stuff. Like E. coli came up and was a huge, huge, terrible thing. It's yeah. killed like a bunch of little mm-hmm. kids because they don't have like the immunity to it and stuff. And that would essentially bypass all of those kind of issues, bacteria and stuff. Because like the cows stand in shit for a Yeah, to- that was know. something I just learned about how it like ends up on plants and then we eat it. Like I, that never would have even occurred to right. me until I learned about it. But for them to be able to actually get rid of that down the road, I mean, I don't see how that couldn't be the cheap, cheapest option, mm-hmm. you know, down the road all around for, for meat, uh, producers yes. product producers um scientists like everybody it just seems like it would be the better choice would i eat it probably not i would probably not put mm-hmm. it part of my diet um it it is encouraging to know that the people who would never take meat out of the diet will now be able to take antibiotics and hormones out of the diet that they didn't need because damn did that fuck Absolutely. me up a lot mm-hmm. i forget my point solid don't solid. look at me like that but uh the <sighs> part of the thing is like I have these little like uh, just just skeptical thoughts like what if what if like friends found it to be like a prank to like tell you you had like the other good meat and they're like haha gotcha like say you're vegan but you like that real cow and I you're just totally like oh that. shit because it's the same stuff like you wouldn't be able to tell do you think people would lie about where the meat came from for the period of time that the real cow meat's cheaper 
Yeah, that's that's something. Because that, like, how do you differentiate it, right? How how could you know that the company is not just bullshitting you? Well, that or like friends and family, like, oh man, True. this this is like ten dollars a pound. I don't want to. Oh, I don't want to buy right. it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna tell my little cousin. You mm-hmm. know. It's, it's it's this organic. meat, but it's really this other meat. Yeah, you know? just, just like, like how if a family member's like, I only eat organic, and you're just like, yeah, totally, those carrots mm-hmm. are organic. I pet, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, And you're exactly. like, just shut the fuck up. Yeah, that was one thing I was thinking about, like, for the period of time that is definitely more expensive, I could see it being false marketed, which that's stinks. True. And that's another reason I wouldn't want to personally consume it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, I mean, you know, it, everybody has a different stance on this one. You know, some people don't really mind the health and stuff but like oh yeah you know like even if you're eating petri dish meat you're still getting meat that has you know cholesterol and you have like eggs and stuff that have like these carcinogens in them stuff so it depends if you subscribe to those kind of thoughts or if you like care about those kind of studies or if you know some people are like i don't give a fuck man i drink soda and i know it's bad for me and i don't give a fuck if i die five years earlier at least i had a better quality of life so there mm-hmm. yeah the absolutely two. but like me personally i would be like I, I don't desire it. So there's no reason for me to start forcing myself. Like this, like I don't smoke yeah, cigarettes yeah, yeah. right now. So there's exactly. no reason for me to be like, well, let's start smoking cigarettes because I should or I want or to. Or because there's a be- better option, you know? Yeah, there's like a better exactly organic like tobacco. I would assume the majority of vegans would feel the same way because most people have been in it so long. They're like, oh, I haven't had a hamburger in five years. So yeah. I just don't really care. Yeah. It becomes one of those things. Uh, just as a very side tangent, I did not think that was going to be the case when I transitioned. It has blown my mind how little I've craved all the stuff that I ate before. Crazy, it right? It blows my mind because right? you were a big consumer that of dairy. That ice cream, that cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah crazy. Dairy, not meat, but dairy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, yeah. And now you've never, you never really talk about that stuff yeah, ever. Crazy. Ever. Yeah, it's really rad. Um, I think I think that was a good. Yeah, absolutely. Do you have anything else you want to put in on that? Mm, not particularly. So if you guys have any sort of like ideas or feedback, you can leave a comment on SoundCloud if you're watching this on SoundCloud or if you want to kind of throw in your thoughts and opinions. Dude, I'm totally willing to like I, I, I want you to go to my YouTube channel, leave it a comment, even if it's like a completely unrelated video, because there's not really a way for you guys to comment on iTunes podcasts. But I think this topic is very interesting and it's cool to see kind of everyone's different opinion because I don't think there's a right opinion well and it would be very cool just to see what the general public feels about it and get like a huge mass of actual opinions on it before it's become a thing true you know yeah so there you go guys i hope you enjoyed this installment make sure that you go and check chelsea lifts out she's on every single social media platform so you can just punch in chelsea lifts you'll be able to find her again if you guys do want to support the podcast you can do so by using the amazon link amazonbrian.com before you actually go on amazon to purchase anything and one to three percent of your purchase will go towards equipment and hosting fees for this podcast but that brings us to the end of this slightly shorter episode i will see you all guys in the next episode peace out motherfucker bye lift heavy or die myron motherfucker Mm. Team Yellow.